Hi guys, Andrew here with Headphones.com. Today we're going to take a look at a subject that has the potential to be particularly radioactive, and it is the topic of Synad. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate why Synad is not what people think it is, and it's also not a particularly good indicator for sound quality. In fact, I'm going to explain why the use of this index and ranking system, which is what Synad typically gets you know, represented as, um, only really serves to confound and confuse people who are potentially looking to buy amplified DAX or other source equipment. But before anything else, I have to also give quite a bit of credit to a friend of mine, Blaine, for helping me out with this video. There was a lot of research that was done and a lot of uh, information that was put together. And uh, we also put together an article that uh, will be linked in the description for anybody who wants to learn more and read more because this subject has the potential to go quite deep. And there's quite a bit more to the subject than what I'm going to be covering in this video. And for anybody who's unaware of what this is, Synad is a score that often gets represented as a ranking of different scores. And you'll typically see this score published anywhere where somebody has done measurements of a DAC or an amplifier or source equipment. A particularly high Synad score may be referenced as a measure of audible transparency, and it's commonly used to suggest sound quality over and above equipment with a lower score. But in both cases, there are reasons to not care about Synad, and more importantly, there are just reasons not to use it, uh, not to publish it. But just so that everybody's clear here, what I'm doing in this video is not giving a subjective reason to not care about Synad. So I'm not going to be saying that because of my experience with a wide range of equipment that the ranking on Synad is wrong or anything like that. Um, or that it doesn't, you know, contribute to sound quality because I've heard I've heard amplifiers that score worse that sound better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not going to give the subjectivist thing. I'm also not going to be talking about tube amplifiers and reasons why people prefer tube amplifiers or any of that kind of stuff because that opens the door to a much broader conversation that is interesting but just no, not appropriate for the scope of this video. And lastly, I have to state as clear as possible because it seems like people just will inevitably misunderstand this point. What I'm about to say here is not a criticism of conducting or looking at measurements. Um, we conduct measurements on this channel, and so this is not one of those videos that just sort of dismisses measurements and says, you know, don't trust measurements, you know, uh, trust subjectivists and things like that. No, that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing is instead giving a more objective reason to not care about Synet. Even though there might be other reasons to not care about it, there might be subjective reasons, and there might be other objective indicators of sound quality for amplifiers and DACs, that's not going to be given in this video. We're not going to cover that. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of context for what this is, what this is not, and why we're doing it. But without further ado, let's get into Synad. So what is Synad? Synad is the ratio for signal to noise plus distortion. Um, and this is often written as THD plus N, just you know, the, the other way around. So you'll see a score there for Synad of you know something like 80, and that's a typically decent score. But you also often see in the higher end scores of you know 120 and stuff like that. Now this measure is also particularly old. It was done in the early 1900s because it was very difficult at the time to uh, separate noise and distortion and look at them sort of independently. Obviously that was in the pre-computer era. And these days, you know, we actually have the tools to be able to analyze this stuff independently a little bit more easily. And you can actually see that obviously in, you know, the rest of whatever articles people are publishing when they're publishing usually Synad scores. Uh, you, know, you can see a whole bunch of additional information there. So in some ways the antiquated index or metric there of Synad is really just there as a result of a canonical inertia of this particular uh, index from like 100 years ago. Of course, now that we can analyze noise and distortion independently, it is worth doing that, but it's also worth examining how much this stuff matters. And as we'll see, uh, the use of that sort of antiquated index score of Synad, it actually serves to kind of uh, confound these two pieces, making it ultimately less useful for people. Let's begin by talking about distortion, and that's, I think, probably the more interesting piece to it because generally you don't want distortion from, well, anything. It's essentially additional products that show up that are not part of the signal, which is typically your music. For example, if you play a one kilohertz test tone, which we'll call the fundamental here, you can then see if there are distortion products at two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz, etc. And these are second, third, fourth, and then eventually fifth order harmonics. Now what happens here as it relates to Synat is that whatever distortion products show up here, they get um, they get represented as total harmonic distortion, and then that's what gets added to Synad. Now, this is a problem. 
let me explain. The main problem with this is that not all distortion is equal. And actually, there's a very interesting video on this by Julian Krauss that was released just the other day. Um, and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. In any case, as it relates to audibility, not all distortion products are equal. For example, if you take that one kilohertz fundamental tone and you add a second harmonic distortion to it, you're going to get a certain level of two kilohertz uh, showing up. Now, you can actually have that level be relatively high and still not hear it because it is so close in proximity to the one kilohertz tone. Contrast this, you know, at the same level, if you had a five kilohertz tone, uh, that would be particularly audible. And that's because it's further away from that fundamental tone that you had. And this doesn't just apply to distortion. This is actually part of what's called the auditory masking effect, especially when you're listening to music, the frequencies that get tokened that are closer to the dominant fundamental frequencies or whatever it is that you're listening to, that is not gonna be as audible as those dominant frequencies. But you can really demonstrate the examples of this with test tones. And in order to set that up, I'm gonna play you guys first a one kilohertz fundamental sine wave test tone, and then we'll go on from there. Now, it's important to remember that this is just a pure test tone and that music is comprised of tons of these all over the place. But in order to give you a sense of harmonic distortion's audibility, I'm gonna play you the second harmonic here, in this case, two kilohertz at the same volume as the one kilohertz test tone as well. Of course, this isn't realistic, but supposing you had something that produced this particular distortion product, a second harmonic distortion at the same level as the, as the fundamental here, in this case, one kilohertz uh, versus two kilohertz, then this is what that would sound like. This is definitely unrealistic, but you could definitely hear that. It should be quite audible. Now, what happens if we reduce that second harmonic by 20 dB? You can still probably hear it, right? What happens if we reduce it by 50 dB? This starts to become particularly difficult to hear. And what happens if we take that same negative 50 dB distortion product and instead of having it be the second harmonic, we make it the fifth harmonic? Let's see what that sounds like. You could probably hear that, right? So this is the auditory masking effect at work, at least as far as it relates to distortion. And it's worth asking, well, what does that mean and how does that relate to Synad? Well, effectively, this means that you could have two amplifiers that score the same on Synad, with one of them having audible distortion products and the other one not. So already, I think you can see how this index is becoming less meaningful. Now, in addition to this, when it comes to distortion, specifically nonlinear distortion like THD, there have been a number of studies that demonstrate that even at fairly high levels of THD, that did not have any correlation with listener preference. In particular, a study by Sean Olive and Steve Tem showed that even headphones with 1% THD, which is fairly high, weren't subjectively less preferred than those with less THD. In a different study, Geddes and Lee observed no significant relationship when comparing subjective ratings with THD and IMD metrics, the IMD being intermodulation distortion. Moreover, there are numerous additional studies with similar findings, both when it comes to the audibility of distortion products with music and their audibility with test tones. And once again, for anybody who's looking for those studies for further reading or just to confirm this, I've left links in the description for that. Just keep in mind that these are behind the uh, Audio Engineering Society paywall. So if you think about the levels of THD that we're talking about with most decent amplifiers, that's already gonna be way lower than 1%. If an amplifier scores around 60 on Synad, if it's distortion dominated and that's what we're talking about, not, not the noise portion, um, that's 0.1%. So take that in the context of the study. You're already not adding anything meaningful to the headphones that you're using, and certainly not with speakers, because with speakers you would have, you're likely to have uh, quite a bit more distortion there. To put this into perspective and frame this another way, adding 10 to 1,000 doesn't really change the ratio between 1,000 and 1 million all that much. Now, there is something else to talk about here. In most normal situations, you're listening to music, uh, you're not listening to test tones, and you're probably listening at an average of around 80 dB. Um, that's sort of on the high end of, of average there. And in this situation, a Synad score of 80 with an amplifier that's distortion dominated is gonna mean that you're never gonna hear any distortion products in your music. This is also gonna be true with a Synad score of 60. Now, with that said, you will be able to create audible distortion products, once again, depending on order. Remember, we mentioned that earlier. Most notably in situations where you're playing two very specific tones simultaneously, um, two fundamental test tones here, so not something that would ever really show up in music, um, because with music, it's you're tokening all kinds of tones at once. When you play two sine wave test tones simultaneously, their distortion product, which is intermodulation distortion, 
can be very far away from where those two sine waves are, and that means that it's not going to be masked. But the important thing here is that none of these situations are realistic situations for when music is playing, when you're listening to music at an appropriate uh, volume level. Now, that raises another question about peak volume level versus average and the maximum level that what you're listening to is potentially going to be tokening with music. Um, and that can be quite a bit louder than what your you know average listening level is going to be at. And the question there would be, well, if the level increases there, is that going to produce an audible uh, result with music? And the answer is actually no. And that's even true for test tones because the louder the tone, the more difficult it is to hear the, the distortion product, even for higher order stuff. So yes, the higher order stuff is easier to hear than the lower order stuff, but the louder the signal overall, the more difficult it is to hear those products and the quieter the signal, the easier it is to hear it. So in practice, when we're talking about listening to music, that question about level and peak is not really all that relevant. So in order to demonstrate that it is more difficult to hear the distortion product at higher level, even with test tones, I'm going to play you guys the same test tone with the same distortion product at two different levels, specifically a 315 hertz test tone with audible third harmonic distortion. And I want you to pay really close attention to whether or not you can hear a difference between these two tones apart from their volume. Remember, this is the same frequency being played twice with the same third harmonic distortion going on. Now, apart from the volume difference, you likely heard a slight difference in overall tone going on there as well. To me, it almost sounds like it's shifted up a little bit when it's quieter. And remember that we're just dealing with test tones here. With music, again, also because of the auditory masking effect with music, this is already either difficult or impossible to hear. And when we're talking about peak level, this effect is also going to be at work. You're not going to be able to hear those distortion products because it's going to be at a much higher level. Our, our ears are actually much more attuned to the dominant frequency there. I'm sympathetic to the idea that it makes sense to find something that is, you know, that has a safety net there that makes sure that you're not going to get any additional distortion products in your music or adding to the headphones that you're using or whatever it is, even though the devices that you're using are going to already be quite a bit higher. And so, you know, you're, as I mentioned, you're really not going to be adding anything to it. I get that there's a element of it gives you confidence that there's nothing else that you're adding to it whatsoever. However, because of all of the issues that I mentioned when it comes to distortion here, it becomes difficult to actually give you a single number there to say you are safe at this threshold. It's difficult because that SINED number doesn't tell you anything about the harmonics that are being produced. Effectively, the safety net number would need to be higher if the order of the harmonics that are being produced is higher as well. And it could be quite a bit lower if the order of the harmonics that we're talking about is quite a bit lower as well. In fact, if anything, that should also indicate that THD, total harmonic distortion, that's represented as a number like 1% to 0.1% or 0.01% or whatever, is not really all that meaningful anyways. And then when you add that to noise and that creates your ratio, you're not really doing any better either. Rather, you're actually doing worse. You're creating ambiguity between distortion, which is level dependent, and noise, which may not be. I think there's also weirdly a lot of people who think that the absence of distortion is is detail somehow. And if you're going to take anything away from this video, I think really it should be that THD is not particularly meaningful. But we also have to talk about noise because that's the other aspect of Synet. And thankfully when it comes to noise, it's a little bit simpler. Basically if something scores well for noise, that means that that thing is particularly versatile. And in my opinion, the noise component of Synad is either highly relevant or completely irrelevant. Whether or not you hear noise from a source matters a lot. And if you've ever plugged a highly sensitive in-ear headphone into an amplifier and heard noise or heard a hum or something like that, you know what I'm talking about. It can be particularly annoying. But that noise score in Synad is highly dependent on the sensitivity of the headphones that are being used. Let me give you an example. If you're trying to buy an amplifier or piece of source equipment for inefficient planars, like for example, an HE6 or Svara or something like that, then the relevant noise score for you is completely different than if you're looking for a piece of source equipment where one of your headphones that you're trying to run from it is something like a Campfire Andromeda that's highly sensitive. 
then it matters critically. In my opinion, the noise question is pass fail. Either you hear noise or you don't. And so having that be a key contributor to Syned is really just a measure of versatility. And that would make sense if you had a whole bunch of different headphones with different sensitivities and impedances and whatever else. Um, you know, maybe you have both an HE6 and a Campfire Andromeda, and then suddenly that's gonna matter if you're trying to run it from the same source. However, I also think it's an open question whether amplifier performance should be evaluated on uh, its ability to drive a wide range of headphones or if it's specifically engineered for one type of headphone or even one headphone in particular because that has happened. There have been amplifiers that are designed specifically for one headphone. But I will leave that question of versatility up to you because I think that's going to be different for everybody you know, because people own different headphones. So once again, for you, that noise score could be either highly relevant or completely irrelevant. And its representation in conjunction with THD in one single number doesn't reflect that. Now that's a basic overview of both noise and distortion and how they can both be confounding variables that aren't very well served by a representation as one number uh, and, and a score and a ranking there. Um, but the other thing to keep in view here is that an amplifier can be noise dominated or it can be distortion dominated. And what that means is that you could technically have a device that scores you know, 50 on Synad or something quite low uh, with that doesn't have any additional products to your music whatsoever. And you could also have a device that scores at 110 or 120 and have it actively add things to your music depending on, again, the headphone situation that you have. Um, and so really that score, apart from the fact that there are also these confounding variables that mean less than what people think, that score on its own is completely arbitrary. And that's also why providing a safety net guideline there to look for a particular score and say anything above that, okay, don't need to worry about that. It's pretty difficult because you could have scores that are higher that for your situation are actually producing audible undesirable results. So I'm gonna conclude by saying this. A long time ago, it made sense to use something like Synad uh, to give some sort of indication. These days, we have a lot more tools available to be able to get better information and more nuanced and specific information. And even though a lot of this stuff isn't gonna matter for the end result, it's not gonna matter for the overall experience or enjoyment of the music because it's not gonna be audible, it makes quite a bit more sense to look at those individual or nuanced results than that one particular score. Now, with that said, I don't think any of this is gonna stop uh, manufacturers from publishing THD information when it comes to source equipment, but also when it comes to you know headphones and loudspeakers and whatever else. And that's technically fine, but it's also not something that people have a factually grounded reason to be worried about. Unless, of course, your listening experience requires you to generate test tones that produce audible distortion products. In that case, maybe you care. But for music and what 99% of people are going to be actually using this stuff for, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to learn more about this, um, definitely check out that article that I've linked in the description that we've put together. Um, and if you're curious about any of the research, that will be linked there as well. Bye for now.